Today, I'm at Rose Morris Guitar Shop, and I'm gonna tell you why London rocks like no other city in the world. London is famous for giving birth to the world's most popular, innovative, and influential rock bands. Here are the top 10 London bands, and as a bonus, I'll show you some of the legendary sites for each band that you can visit and walk in the footsteps of rock royalty. Although the Beatles stamp their legacy in London, they're a Liverpool band, so they won't appear on the list. So let's get this thing started. All you need to hear is five notes and you're out of your chair and ready to rock. The Kinks were formed in North London in 1963 by brothers Ray and Dave Davies. Since they topped the charts with You Really Got Me in 1964, the Kinks have been one of London's most enduring bands. Along with their fuzzy garage band guitar hits, they showed versatility with more melodic numbers like Picture Book and Sunday Afternoon. Their sound continued to evolve through the 70s and 80s with hits like Lola, Destroyer, and Come Dancing. You actually get two landmarks for the price of one here in Muswell Hill. Right behind me is number six, Denmark Street. That's where Ray and Dave Davies actually grew up. But wait till you see what's inside the Cliss Old Arms. This is where the Kinks played together for the first time. And any rock fan would love how the pub created a room dedicated to the Kinks with tons of memorabilia. It's like a hard rock that's all Kinks. Take a trip up here and toast London's number 10 rock band. They didn't invent prog rock, but they certainly mastered it. The classic Yes lineup of Chris Squire, Rick Wakeman, Steve Howe, John Anderson, and Bill Bruford were some of the most accomplished musicians ever assembled in one band. Prog rock relies on indulgent solos and complex song structures. This lineup commonly turned songs that were over twice as long as typical radio numbers into hits. In the 80s, Yes reinvented themselves as an MTV powerhouse with the worldwide number one hit, Owner of a Lonely Heart. This is the Wildwood Kitchen on Shaftesbury Ave, an odd but fascinating place for a rock landmark. Come and see. This used to be the Lucky Horseshoe Cafe in the late 60s, and this is where Yes formed and practiced. And if you come down to the basement, you can actually see their blue plaque. There are really only a handful of bands that you can truly say changed everything, but this is one of them. In the mid-70s, London was in turmoil. The youth was frustrated about unemployment and a bleak future. There was riots and there was bland and bloated music from such acts as Leo Sayer, Barry Manilow, and Barbara Streisand filling the airwaves. But in 1977, a raw, profane, and angry band with limited musical talent threw gasoline on the industry and lit a match. The Sex Pistols' early shows were legendary. Countless future stars from Morrissey to Susie Sue were inspired by the chaotic performances. But like a gas fire, the pistols burned out quick. But their once banned songs like God Save the Queen and Anarchy in the UK are iconic. There would be no Clash, no Nirvana, no Green Day without the pistols. A graveyard might be an odd place for the Sex Pistols landmark, but we got a good one here. Highgate Cemetery is the final resting place of Pistols manager Malcolm McLaren. The Pistols were about as much about their image and their fashion as they were about their music, and Malcolm McLaren was principally responsible for that. McLaren brilliantly manipulated press and TV coverage to increase the band's notoriety with outrageous behavior and publicity stunts. They played what's generally considered the greatest live performance ever, which makes them a lock for this list. In the 70s, Queen were on a roll with hits like Bohemian Rhapsody, We Are the Champions, and Crazy Little Thing Called Love. But other than Another One Bites the Dust, they really didn't do much in the 80s, 
until the Live Aid performance is simply rock history. I remember watching it on TV that day and my jaw dropped. From then on, Queen became one of rock's biggest acts. In 1992, the movie Wayne's World brought Queen back atop the charts for a whole new generation of fans. Freddy's house on Logan Place is one of the great rock stops in all of London, but I already took you there in my Hidden Rock Neighborhood video, which you can check out. Today, I'm at the Imperial College Union, which is the first place that Queen ever played in London. Ironically, they never got to play around the corner in London's greatest venue because their staging was too large and elaborate. The number six band evolved punk music without losing a bit of its integrity. Known as the only band that matters, The Clash's music could not be definitively categorized. They combined elements of punk, ska, rock, and reggae. They added credible talent and controlled performance while maintaining the emotional energy of punk rock. But what really set The Clash apart was their social and political commentary in their music. Lead singer Joe Strummer stated, We're anti-fascists. We're anti-violence, we're anti-racist, and we're procreative. Rolling Stone magazine called London Calling the best album of the 80s. I can't say I disagree. The Clash has always had a connection to Camden, and one of the big reasons is they played the 1976 Festival of Punk here at the Roundhouse. It was a breakout performance that propelled The Clash to the upper echelon of the punk scene. The historic Roundhouse is still a popular music venue and a great place to see a show. This is the birthplace of the only solo artist on our list. In this list, influence is as important as talent and fame. Entire music genres from glam to alternative can be traced back to the genius of David Bowie. In 1972, Bowie appeared on top of the Pops. He was unlike anything anyone ever saw, a confident, dynamic, and mind-blowingly androgynous being that completely drew viewers in. And that was only the beginning. Bowie took on several personas like Aladdin Sane, Pierrot, the Thin White Duke, and of course, Ziggy Stardust. David Bowie was rock's greatest chameleon. Every time he changed his look or his sound, it was successful. Hell, just about every 80s London alternative band was a David Bowie clone. And in the 80s, Bowie evolved again into his clean-cut, serious moonlight phase. David Bowie was born here in Brixton, and in 2016 when he died, this mural painted by James Cochran became his de facto London shrine. It's right across the street from the Brixton tube station and well worth the trip. You can pretty much throw the top four into a hat. It's the Mount Rushmore of London rock. In 1965, three architecture students from London Polytechnic joined up with Sid Barrett to form Pink Floyd. They started playing rhythm and blues, but soon evolved into the drug-fueled world of psychedelia with meandering jams and screen projections that complemented the music and the mood. Tragically, Barrett succumbed to his drug addiction and was forced to leave the band, but that opened the door that no one could have predicted. David Gilmour replaced Barrett and brought tight guitar playing skill and smooth vocals to complement Roger Waters' smart but cynical songwriting. After maturing as a quartet over the next several years, Pink Floyd had arguably the greatest four-album run in rock history with Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, Animals, and The Wall. Floyd's mellow sound, thought-provoking lyrics, and grand-scale live shows make them unlike any band before or since. This is Battersea Power Station where Pink Floyd made pigs fly. Now it's an indoor mall and a great space for any Pink Floyd fan to come and visit. In 1971, they asked, who's next? Well, who do you think's next? Who's next? 
They're the voice of the mod generation and the loudest band in the world. In 1964, a stand-in drummer named Keith Moon literally tore the skin off the snare with his wild style. He won over the group who made him a full-time member and the Who was born. Woodstock, Monterey, and the Isle of Wight festivals were the launching pad for the Who. Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey's showmanship, John Entwistle's quiet demeanor, and a complete animal behind the drums won over live audience everywhere they played. But personality alone doesn't take you to the top. All four were among the best ever with their instruments, and Townsend could write great pop songs as well as complete concept albums like Tommy and Quadrophenia. Songs like Bob O'Reilly, Pinball Wizard, Who Are You, and My G -G 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 Generation will always be staples of rock radio. You don't need an excuse to come to Camden High Street, but today I'm here to show you the Music Walk of Fame, and specifically this marker honoring The Who. The Who was the first band to earn this honor in 2019. Here's Townsend and Daltrey at the unveiling. Those who know me will surely be surprised by my number two band, which is actually my favorite band. Led Zeppelin is the greatest hard rock band that ever lived. When Jimmy Page's Yardbirds broke up, he enlisted blues singer Robert Plant, bassist John Paul Jones, and drummer John Bonham. With the release of Led Zeppelin I, the band just took off immediately. Many bands have tried to emulate the raw power of Zeppelin, but no matter how good Black Sabbath or Aerosmith or Def Leppard were, they could never surpass the bar set by Led Zepp. The stories of their behavior on tour are legendary, and their manager Peter Grant's intimidating tactics changed the way bands did business by demanding 90% of revenues when bands used to just get 10%. But it's the music that lands Led Zeppelin at number two. Cashmere, Dazed and Confused, Whole Lot of Love, the list of rock standards is endless, topped of course by Stairway to Heaven, which is generally considered the greatest rock song ever written. I could take you back to Jimmy Page's house like I have in previous videos. I figure someday he's definitely gonna come out with his dustbins and I'll get to meet him. But for now, we're on King's Road. Behind me is the flat where Led Zeppelin's label, Swan Song's offices were. You might remember Swan Song because of their famous logo, and I don't know about you, but I definitely have this shirt. Before we get to number one, we gotta do some honorable mentions. Genesis. Dire Straits. Iron Maiden. The Police. Elton John and any band with Eric Clapton. Can you figure out the number one band? Who's the best band from London? Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones every time. The Stones, of course. Sexually charged, dirty, and dangerous, the Stones were the bad boys that scared your parents. They were the anti-Beatles. And for six decades, they have been the quintessential London rock band. Mick Jagger's stage presence was influenced by James Brown, but he added a herky-jerkiness and facial expressions that were all his own. The Stones really took off when they moved from covering R&B songs and wrote their own stuff like Satisfaction, Paint It Black, Under My Thumb, Sympathy for the Devil, and Ruby Tuesday. After the brilliant Brian Jones was replaced by Mick Taylor, the Stones cruised into the 70s with legendary albums Exile on Main Street, Sticky Fingers, Some Girls, and Tattoo You. When you come to London's iconic Denmark Street, you see the world's most famous rock logo in the window of Regent Sounds. Let's go in and find out why. Hey, this is Dustin here at Regent Sounds. Dustin, tell me why a Rolling Stones fan would be interested in visiting the store. Because this used to be a studio. So from 1951 through to about 1984, this was a recording studio. Most notably, the Rolling Stones recorded their first record here. Every rock fan should visit Denmark Street when they go to London, especially this historic shop. So that's the list. And this being the internet, I know you'll tell me about the egregious omissions that I've made. But if you did like this video, please like, 
share and subscribe and do put those comments on if you didn't agree. Actually put a comment on if you did agree. It really helps out the channel. I appreciate it. Rock on.